In this video, I'm going to test the five methods for reading through an Excel table using VBA, and I'm going to see which one of these methods is the fastest. Now, don't forget, you can download the source code for this video from the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. This is the table that we're going to be using, and this table has 50,000 records. So we're going to be using each of our methods to read through this table, and then we're going to time it and see which method is the fastest. The first thing we need to do is to set up our timer so we can measure the speed of all our methods. So I'm going to use the CLS timer class, which I created just to make timing things a little bit easier. So we declare the variable and we just run start. And then at a certain period, what we're going to do is we're going to call my timer and we're going to get it to print out the result. Now list row four is going to be our first sub and that's going to read through the table using the list rows. And when that's done, we're going to print out the name of this sub and then we're going to print out the time from the start. So now what we want to do is we want to create our list row for sub. So again, this is going to read through the table using the list rows. Now the first thing we want to do is get our table. And a table in VBA is actually a list object. But we'll call it table here just to make things a bit clearer. So we set the table equal the worksheet object. So sheet sales is the codename of the worksheet, but it can be any worksheet object. And then list objects, we want to use the table name, which in our case is TB sales. Now the name of the table, if you want to see it, you click on the table, click on table design on the ribbon, and you'll see the table name on the very left. And you can see it's TB sales here. So once we have the table, we can create our for loop. And so what we'll do is dim i as long and temp as string. So we'll read the data from the table to the temp variable. And we say for i equals one to list rows dot count, so very much like using range, and then we'll say temp is assigned to, and now we're going to get back one of the cells. So we say table list rows, and it's the current row, so it's i, and then we want to get the range of that list row, and then from the range we get the cells one one, which gives us back basically the left hand column. So it's a bit long winded to read the, the list rows. Let's go ahead and run our code and see what kind of time we get. So we run the code, you'll see that it took 915 milliseconds. So we'll see as we go through them and use the different methods, how this compares to the other ones that we use. So now let's create our second sub. And our second sub is going to be list row, but this time we're using the for each loop. So again, we'll just copy the name of it here so that it'll print out the name in our window. And this is going to be E from last, which means from the last time we printed a timer, it's going to start from there. So let's go and create our new sub. And our new sub is going to start the same way as our old sub. We're going to be getting the table. So we'll just copy and paste the code from down here. And then instead of I as long, we're going to have row as list row. And then we'll say for each row, and it'll be each row in table list rows. So for each row in table list rows. So the for each loop, generally speaking, it's a bit faster than the other for loop, but we'll see in this case if that's the case. So to get it, we use row range cells one one. So just a slight change really to our code. So now it's going to be very interesting to see how it compares to the first one. So when we run the code, you'll see the first one 998, the second one 965. So you can see for each is slightly faster. We run it again, you can see it's a little more faster this time. And we run it one more time and you can see that it's still just that little bit faster, but not that much difference between them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at range. So in this case, we'll get the range from the table and then we'll read through it using a standard for loop for the range. So let's see how this one will compare to the ones using list row. So we're going to copy list row for because it's going to be a similar sub. And we'll just make a few changes to this to get it to use the range. So what we want to do here is declare a range variable. And then we can just set the range equal to the table, which is list objects table and the table name, and then the data body range. So the data body range is very useful. It just gives us back the data in the body. So ignores data in the header or the, in the totals row. And then you can see when we change down here, retrieving the data, you can see that it's much simpler to do it. It's just range and cells. 
and it's just cell row I and column one, because we're just getting column one in this case. So let's go back and run the code and see how it compares speed-wise to what we've been doing before. So you can see at this point, it's almost twice as fast as the other two methods. So we run it again and you can see the same thing. It's a little more than twice as fast in this case. So you can see using far to a standard range is actually quicker than using the list rows. And it's actually better too because it makes your code more standard with other code that you're using that isn't reading from a table. Now let's try a range for each loop and see how this compares. So again, we'll copy the list row and the list row for each this time, and we'll just change the sub as we've done before to make it easier than rewriting the whole thing from scratch. So we say dim row as range. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to say for each row in the range rows. And then what we'll do at the top is we declare our range variable. So we say dim rg as range. And again, we set the range equal to the table and it's the data body range then from the table. So we don't need range here. We just need cells. And we're using cells one, one. And let's run and see what we get or how it compares to the others. So you can see that it's slightly slower than range four. Now I've just got to update the text here because I didn't update it earlier on. But you can see that the last one is just slightly slower range for each than range for. So we run it again and you'll see that this time for each is slightly faster. So not much really in the difference between them. So now we're going to see the fastest one that we have. And to those of you who follow my channel, you won't be surprised that it's going to involve using arrays. So let's use arrays in our final method and see how this compares speed wise. So how do we use arrays instead of the range? Well, first of all, let's copy our range and you'll see that the code is not that different really than when we use the range. It's just a few slight changes that we've got to do. So the first thing is we declare our array as a variant. And then what we do is we just say array equals and then we say the value of the range. And what this does is it, it creates an array automatically in VBA and puts it in ARR. So when we're reading through, we use L bound to give us the low, lowest part of the array and U bound to give us the highest part. And we don't use cells, we simply use the array's name and then just the index, which is I1. So let's run this code and see how it compares to all the others. So you can see use arrays here is considerably faster, five or six times faster than using range, and it's about 12 times faster than using the list rows. So always in VBA, it's much better to place something in memory and then read it through in memory rather than keep reading from the worksheet. So we run it again and you can see the results are still pretty much the same. It's six or 12 times faster than the other methods. Let me know in the comments which method that you use to read from tables. And make sure to check out my video on using arrays instead of ranges, which you can see here on the screen. You can download the workbook and code for this video from the description below. And if you liked the video, then please click on the like button. And if you'd like to get notified of my upcoming videos, then click on the subscribe button and the bell icon beside it. I hope to see you on the next video.